Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, then my name is Aaron. I'm a junior doctor working in London and on the side, I try to put out these kind of study YouTube videos. So if you're a medical student or you're a PA student and you're struggling with your history exams, then hopefully this video is gonna be really helpful for you guys. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you about the approach that I used that really helped me prepare for my OSCE stations. And in this video, I'm gonna focus on the kind of communication skill OSCE stations. So I went to Cambridge Med School and our communication skill stations in our exams were broadly one of two types. So the first type was your kind of classic history taking where the aim was to get the history from the patient, then summarize it, present that history back to an examiner, and then try and come up with a list of possible differentials. Um, the second kind of history taking session that we got tested on was difficult communication skills. So that would be things like dealing with an angry patient or dealing with an upset relative, breaking bad news to a patient. So for example, breaking the diagnosis of a cancer to a patient, and then kind of, kind of vague things, things like maybe how to consent a patient for surgery. So for that kind of first kind of classic history taking station, I use this eight step approach based all around the Calgary Cambridge model to take all my histories. I made a video on this and it seems to be doing really well. I've actually had people kind of message me saying this has kind of completely changed the way they prepare for their history exams, which is really, really cool. Um, if you haven't seen it, then I'll kind of put a link up there. So please check it out. But in this video, I wanna focus on those difficult communication skill stations. And hopefully I'm gonna be able to give you a framework, some sort of approach that you can apply to whatever station that your medical school throws at you in your exams. So the key thing that personally I struggled with, and I think most students struggle with in these difficult communication skill stations is finding the right balance between gathering information, but also providing some sort of structure to your consultation. And while doing those things, also doing the things that all the examiners love. So things like ICE, so things like chunk and check, things like summarizing. So let's have a look at the eight step approach that I personally use and base it around the following scenario. You're the FY1 doctor on the general surgery team and you've been asked to speak to Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith was due to have an elective hernia operation today, but this has had to be canceled because his blood pressure as pre-assessment was noted to be very high 205 over 97. The anaesthetist has said it's not safe to proceed with surgery. Mr. Smith has just been told that his operation is not going ahead and would like to speak to one of the doctors. So this is the brief that we've been given and we can already predict that this patient, Mr. Smith, is probably going to be very upset, very frustrated. So whatever kind of station you're given in your difficult communication school station, step one I like to think is always initiate the session. And that involves three things. Number one, introduce yourself. Number two, confirm you have the correct patient or relative. And then number three, start to try and build some sort of doctor patient rapport. So hi there, my name is Aaron Kiru. I'm one of the general surgical doctors. Is it Mr. Smith? Nice to meet you. So at this point, it's very likely that your actor is gonna tear straight into you, kind of butt into what you're saying, be very upset, be very frustrated. They may not even want to sit down and let the consultation get going. Kind of from your side, it's really important to be patient, let them speak, hear them out, give them their time, and then try and build that depth to patient rapport. So Mr. Smith, first of all, I can see you're incredibly upset and I'm really sorry for what's happened. I'm here to try and explain everything, go through a plan of what we're gonna to do to fix this and answer any questions you may have. Is it okay if we sit down? So hopefully this is the point where your patient started to calm down because number one, you've let them speak, you've given them their time. Number two, you've not been rude back to them. Number three, you've apologized. And number four, you've kind of signposted to the patient that you've actually come here to give some useful information. So it's in their best interest to kind of let this consultation get started so they can hear what you've got to say. So step two is assess the patient's starting point. So at this point, you've got your patient slightly calmer. It's really important to find out what are they already aware of? What have they been told? So something like, before we go any further, Mr. Smith, it would be really helpful if you could kind of summarize what you've already been told. And in this case, let's just assume that Mr. Smith hasn't been told much apart from the fact that one of the nurses has just come up to him and said, unfortunately, his operation's going to be canceled. So under step three, which is set the agenda. At this point, it's really good to signpost both to your examiner and to your patient what your kind of main points of discussion are going to be for the rest of the consultation. And it's really nice to transition to this from your last section, which was finding the starting points of what your patient's already aware of. So something like, okay, so that's really useful information to know. What I'd like to do today is talk about three things with you. Number one, I'd like to explain why your operation has had to be canceled. Number two, I'm gonna explain what we're going to do to fix this. And number three, I'm gonna try and answer any questions you may have. Is there anything else you would like me to cover? I think it's actually really nice to just number things to clarify 
one, two, three. So you kind of know where the consultation is going to go in that order. Also that bit at the end where I'm like, is there anything else you want me to cover is the first time that I'm trying to introduce the ICE section. So ideas, concerns, expectations, trying to open up the patient and see if there's anything in particular they want to cover, anything in particular they're worried about. And we'll try and keep doing this throughout our history. Okay, so under step four, which is transitioning into that first point of your agenda, which you've already mentioned. So in this case, it's to explain why your operation has been canceled to the patient. This part is kind of lots of giving information to the patient, but despite that, I think it's really important to keep this to, try to keep it to two to three sentences because there's still lots of the history to get through to try and get lots and lots of marks. So something like, so Mr. Smith, if we start with why we have to cancel your operation today, as you told me, you've come in for your hernia operation today and last week you came into the hospital for a series of checks as part of the pre-assessment, one of them being your blood pressure. So unfortunately at the time, your blood pressure was high and it's also high today. And because of that, we're unable to proceed with the surgery. So first of all, I can only apologize for you having to come in all the way today. It's something that we should have picked up as part of the pre-assessment. And I can only apologize for not letting you know earlier. I've already let our admin team know about this mistake. So they're gonna look into why this has happened and try and make sure this never happens in the future. Okay, so under step five. And at this point, we've covered our first point of our agenda. And it's really important and really nice at this point just to check our patient is following us, is kind of understanding what we're saying. And it's also a nice point to kind of start to introduce some more ice. So just to make sure, does everything make sense so far? And also, is there anything else you want to mention or anything that's worrying you that you want me to talk about? So at this point, hopefully you start to build that doctor patient rapport and your patient opens up to you and kind of gives you one of his concerns. So let's just say in this case, he's been worrying about his son recently. He's had to come in for his operation today. His wife's at work and he's had to leave his young son at his friend's house. So it's really important that you listen to that concern and then be patient, be empathetic and try to kind of offer some sort of solution to that. Thank you so much for sharing that with me. I can see it's really important to you. It's also really important to us that you are as relaxed as possible before your operation. What might be helpful then is next time when we set a date for your operation, we find a date or time that's good for you so that you can come to your operation while your wife can stay at home with your son. I think the best person for me to put you in touch with is James, he's our theater coordinator, so he organizes all the operations and their dates. So maybe after this, I'll see if he's free and he can have a chat with you to try and pencil in a few dates that would work best with your situation at home. Okay, so on to step six, which is now addressing the second point of your initial agenda. And normally, this is some kind of action plan, so kind of steps moving forward to fix the current situation. Okay, so something like, so now the most important thing is to try and reduce your blood pressure for two reasons. Number one, so you can have your operation safely as soon as possible. Number two, just for your general health, it's not safe to have a blood pressure that high for the long term. So there are two ways to reduce your blood pressure that can be through lifestyle changes as well as with tablets. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to write to a GP and ask them what they can start you on to help reduce that blood pressure. But in the meantime, two things that you can do to help would be to increase your daily exercise and also reduce your salt intake. So that's kind of the action plan in this case. And you can see that the action plan doesn't have to be anything super elaborate. As long as kind of you've got one or two or three things that would be kind of vaguely useful, vaguely reasonable in your situation. So in this case, I've gone with, I'm gonna to speak to your GP to try and start some blood pressure medications and kind of some lifestyle changes, increasing exercise, reducing your salt intake. And that kind of fits with any problem, any kind of consultation. You can always use a GP one. That's kind of always going to be relevant. Okay, so on to step seven, which is your chunk and check and ice. So once again, exactly the same as before. Does that all make sense? Is it all making sense so far? And is there anything in particular you want to ask me? Or is there anything in particular you're worried about that you want to mention? Okay, and finally, step eight, which is summarize and wrap up. So this is your chance to signpost both to the examiner, to your patient, that you're kind of wrapping up the consultation. I think it's nicer when you kind of bring the consultation to a close rather than the timer just goes off and it's move on to the next station. So normally you get kind of a 30 second or one minute warning before the end of your station, and that's your cue to move on to this kind of part of the history. So you wanna try and do a few things here. Number one, try and give them or offer them a patient information leaflet. If it's appropriate and there's kind of been a mistake or some sort, then you want to mention PALS, the Patient Advice Liaison Service. Number three, you want to kind of offer them some sort of follow-up. So that could be a telephone number they can call if they're worried or kind of an actual clinic appointment. And then number four, you want to just kind of quickly summarize what you've talked about during that brief history. So in this case, you could kind of wrap up your history with something like, 
I know I've given you a lot of information, Mr. Smith, just to kind of summarize the key points. Uh, first of all, I'm sorry that this has happened to you. Like I said before, I've already spoken to the admin team to try and get to the bottom of why this wasn't picked up earlier. But of course, you're welcome to make a formal complaint and you can contact the patient advice liaison service if you want to do this. Also, I'd like to give you this patient information leaflet, which summarizes kind of the risks of blood pressure and things that you can do to bring your blood pressure down. And just to kind of summarize the key points, like I said, the reason why your operation has been canceled is because your blood pressure is too high and it's not safe to go ahead. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna to speak to your GP to think about kind of starting on some tablets to reduce this. You also mentioned that um, you're worried about your son. So like I said, I'll put you in touch with James who can hopefully find you a better date for your next operation. And that's the end. So that's the eight step approach that I use for all of these kind of difficult communication skills. And I think you can kind of translate that model, translate that approach to any kind of station. So if you're dealing with an angry patient, if you're dealing with an upset relative, set the agenda, uh, assess their starting point, etc., etc. If you're having to consent a patient for surgery, it's the same kind of thing. I think the main takeaway points from this video or from this entire approach is number one, it hopefully gives you a structure that you can use and kind of easily remember. Number two, it shows that it's really important not to just kind of do the thing that the history is asking you to do. So don't just deal with the angry patient. For example, don't just in this case, explain why your operation has been canceled or don't just break the bad news of a diagnosis. It's really useful. I think examiners love it when you take steps forward to try and start to formulate some sort of action plan. It doesn't have to be anything elaborate, but also doing all those things that examiners love. So chunk and check, I summarize. Okay guys, so that kind of brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found that useful. Um, if you did like the video, then please consider subscribing to the channel. Please drop a like on this video and let me know in the comments what worked and what didn't. And let me know what other videos would be useful and I'll try my best to get the content out for you guys. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.